Hello, and thank you for joining me today. In Revelation 3, 21 and 22, Jesus said, To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And if you have ears to hear what I'm saying today, as the Holy Spirit is using me as a vessel to teach you how to be an overcomer, because that's what Jesus said to the one he said to him who overcomes, not just somebody who just, you know, goes through the motions of being a believer. No, to him who overcomes, Jesus said, I will grant to him to sit with me on my throne, just as I also overcame and sat down with the father on his throne. But the key is we have to have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. And that's something that we need to understand that. It's not a lot of people think that it's just, OK, well, you just name the name of Jesus and you get a free ticket to heaven and then you can just live like you want to. And they're just going to get a full package reward when it's all said and done. But that's not the case. We are to be overcomers. In fact, it's one of the commandments of the New Testament. It's not just a suggestion. We are commanded to overcome. And when you overcome, what do you overcome? Every lie of the devil, every oppression, depression, bondage, sickness, um, uh, everything that the devil throws at you, you overcome it. Why? Because greater is the Holy Spirit that's in us than he that's out there in the world. We can overcome. Jesus has equipped us with that power to overcome. But it's up to us because we have free will. A lot of people, they just, you know, neglect you know, spending time with God. They neglect prayer and time in the word. Well, that's just a recipe for disaster. If you want to overcome and be able to sit with Jesus on his throne, and what are you going to be doing on that throne? <clears throat> You're going to be with Jesus, ruling and reigning as kingdom government over the nations. And, and we are getting to that place where it's coming sooner and sooner because we are in the last of the last days. And if you want to get to that next level, then you need, you need to start right now. Be an overcomer. We are to run our spiritual race, race for all it's worth. And it's worth more than you could ever imagine. Jesus is the coach at the end of the finish line. He's cheering us on. He's saying, come on, you can do it. I've equipped you. Overcome. Cross that finish line and go forth into the rest of eternity. But see, a lot of people never start the race. Some people start it, but they don't finish it. Well, we need to finish it. Like I said, it doesn't matter what the devil throws. And that's all the devil does is just throw all kinds of, of uh, you know, uh, darts. He throws all his, you know, his tactics, his schemes, anything to put a, a monkey wrench in God's plan for your life. Well, don't allow the devil to do that. You overcome that. You take authority over the devil and say, oh, no, no. Jesus has promised me an eternity. Jesus has promised me, you know, awesome things. And we're all right, you know. In that place where we can live in the awesome thing. Because if you are truly born again, that means you're blood bought and baptized in the Holy Spirit, then you have a new spiritual DNA within you. You have the blood of Jesus coursing through your veins. So you can overcome. It doesn't matter what's what's going out uh, on out there in the world. Jesus is the head, we're the part of his body. He overcame. He said seated at, seated at the right hand of the Father. And he wants us to be in that same place with him. But if you're just trying to just go through the motions of being a believer or one who just, you know, thinks that, oh, it's just too hard, this faith walk. No, it's not. You need to understand that you can do it because you if you're born again, you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you, empowering you to overcome. So don't just sit on your hands thinking it's just, you know, about saying a sinner's prayer or believing there is a God. And then, boom, you're just going to get a full package reward. A lot of people think that. No, we are to overcome. Yes, things are going to happen because we are in the enemy's camp. This world is Satan's camp. Satan is the god of this world. But rejoice because we have, we, have, we can overcome him. Jesus already overcame. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And now you have, you're in that place, that position, if you will stand in it to take authority over the enemy and say, oh, no, you're not going to steal what God has placed in my heart. You're not going to steal all those heavenly rewards that God, you know, has, you know, ordained from the foundation of the world for those who would be the overcomers. We are to be more than overcomers, more than conquerors. Think about it. In 1 Corinthians 9, in 1 Corinthians 9, it says, Paul talking to the church at Corinth, do you not know that those who run in a race all run but one receives the prize, run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, 
but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I preach to others, I myself should become disqualified. So Paul is trying to get it into the forefront of the thinking of not only believers then, but us today. Because, like I said, we are those people who are the body of Christ, if you are blood-bought and baptized in the Holy Spirit. He said, don't you know that those who run in a race, they all run, but only one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it, that you may win it. Run your race, your race to win. Like I said, Jesus is the coach, and he is cheering you on, saying, come on, you can do it, you can overcome. doesn't matter what stumbling stone that the devil tries to throw in your path to get you off course. No, you're going to overcome. Why? Because, like I said, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. But notice he says, one receives the prize. Who receives the prize? The one who crosses the finish line. The one who overcomes. The one who runs his race with endurance. Endurance is outlasting the devil. So when the devil keeps, you know, putting his little two cents worth in there, he says, oh, no, that's not going to hinder me. I'm going to run this race for all it's worth. And it's, like I said, it's worth more than you can imagine. To him who overcomes, Jesus will grant you to sit with him on the throne. Think about it. He says, and everyone who peaks for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. It means in a natural race, people are going to win like, you know, a perishable crown. It's going to be something that's like a, a trophy or a plaque or a ribbon. But those things are going to one day fade away. They're going to get mothy. They're going to get, you know, worn out. But it says we who are running this spiritual race for an imperishable crown, one that is eternal, one that will never tarnish, never fade, never get mothy. And our, our, our eternal crown is that crown of glory, that crown of righteousness, that all those rankings that we're going to have in New Jerusalem. Once we appear at the judgment seat of Christ after we're glorified and raptured and we're going to be um, uh, receiving all the crowns. Different, different ones, soul winner's crown, you know, uh, the crown of life, the uh, crown of glory, so many of them. But a lot of people are not going to finish their race, and they're, when they stand before God, they're, they're not going to receive a lot of things. Why? Because a lot of people give up. Well, don't give up. You, are, you have a conqueror attitude, or well, at least you're supposed to, because each one of us were dealt the measure of faith. Now it's up to us to grow that faith by standing upon this word. We need to not look to the world. We look to the word. Jesus is the word. And the Bible is his written word unto us. And we are to walk in it, to apply it, to love, love it more than anything else. We are to be in love with the word. Because a lot of people think that it's just, okay, like I said, you know, saying a sinner's prayer or just church attendance or just, you know, thinking that, well, I showed up, Lord God, so count me in. No, no, we have to run this race. We have to walk and live by faith. We have to be overcomers, more than conquerors. Like I said, we are going to overcome everything that the devil tries to put in our pathway. Why? Because we're not going to give in to his tactics. The Bible says we're not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. We're not to be. We are to know them, and then that, that we need to know how he works so that we can take authority over him and overcome everything that he puts in our path so that we can walk on God's path. God's path is the narrow path, the path of life, the path that you know that most people won't take. Most people will take the broad way, as Jesus said in Matthew 7. But we're to stay on the narrow path, the pathway of life, that pathway that's going to lead us right into the rest of eternity to receive that full reward, to receive, you know, like I said, that crown of glory and righteousness. But you have to overcome. You can't just say, oh, I can't do this. No, don't be lukewarm. Don't be cold. Be hot, on fire for God. No, it's like, you know what? I'm running this race because my master and savior paid an ultimate price on the cross for me to not only, you know, bless me in things, you know, for eternity, but now. See, we need to run our race now because we are in this place where we can walk in the blessings of God. We can, but not just because we're keeping them for ourselves. No, we're to be blessed, to be a blessing. So we can show to this world there is something better. Because, like I said, this world is, is, is a nasty place. But you don't have to get fearful about that because Jesus said, I've overcome the world. And if he did, we can do it too. Because not only are we to do the works he did, he said, well, do even greater works. Why? Because he went to the Father and he sent us the helper, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is allow the Holy Spirit to operate in our lives, not to grieve him, but to allow him to empower us with his, his gifts, the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, so that we can go forth and to be more than conquerors, more than overcomers, those who run the race, who cross the finish line, and who go forth in the full measure of eternity that God has for us. So we really need to understand that. So yes, we are not 
you know, as one who beats the air. No, we're fighting the good fight of faith. It's a good fight. Why? Because we win. Think about it. We win. But if you're just going through the motions, then guess what? You're, you're going to be in that place where you're just going to fall flat on your face because it's not about going through the motions. We have to, like I said, run this race for all it's worth. And it's worth more than you can ever imagine. In 1 Timothy 6, uh, 12, verse 12, it says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Again, it's a good fight because we win. But you have to you have to fight. You can't just sit back and say, oh, I can't do this. No, there's not to be any lazy soldiers in God's army. We're to be the army of God, those who go forth into battle, who defeat the enemy at every turn. And we take back ground that he's stolen. And we go forth and we march on this highway of holiness, this narrow pathway, so that we can hear, well done, good and faithful son and daughter, enter into the, the full measure of God's kingdom. Be it because you are an overcomer. So we are commanded to overcome. Now, like I said, but we have free will. If you want to just sit back and, you know, and sit on your hands and think it's just about, you know, going through the motions or, or, or the other type of person who just thinks, well, I started it and this space stuff didn't work and it's just too hard and, and I'm just lonely and I'm losing friends. Well, who cares about all that stuff? It's not about, you know, how many friends you can have and how, how being Mr. or Mrs. Congeniality. No, it's about going forth, even if you're persecuted, because the Bible says you, you're blessed. If you're persecuted for standing up for what is right, because great is your reward in heaven. That's an overcomer attitude. It doesn't matter what people say about you. They said all kinds of things about Jesus. So if they say things about you, you're in good company. Don't worry about that. Stand upon the word of God and be an overcomer. Because to him who overcomes, not just barely gets by, not just goes to him, who overcomes will be sitting with Jesus on his throne for all eternity, ruling and reigning with him. Think about it. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 54 and then 57 and 58 it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Then it goes on to say in 57 and 58, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It's not, it's not in vain. All the works of faith, you know, walking on this narrow path, being a person of prayer, being a worshiper, being a person who is totally immersed in this word is not in vain because God, yeah, he's going to reward you. He says he gives us the victory, the victory that overcomes. It says in 1 John 5, 4, he says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith, our faith. But we have to operate in our faith. We have to put it into practice. We have to have faith in our faith, not just thinking that, well, I've tried that faith step. It don't work. No, you don't try faith. You do faith. You are a person who's supposed to live and walk by faith. But notice he said that, you know, about that in the moment, twinkling of an eye, that's, you know, just in, at the last trumpet, we're going to be changed from this corruptible flesh into immortality. We are going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. That's when that process of fusion that started once we were born again, the completion of it, when we're going to be changed into the full measure of the likeness of Jesus Christ, the glorification. And then after Afterwards, we're going to be raptured up. So think about it. That's the next big event on God's end timetable of events is the glorification and the rapture of the church. And following that is the judgment seat of Christ when we stand. And that's just for the body of Christ. It's not a sin judgment. It's to receive our, you know, our crowns and our rulings and rankings in New Jerusalem. So if you want to be there and have many crowns that you can lay before his feet, then you need to start right now to be an overcomer. You should have already started the day you were born again, but you haven't. Time's not too late. But once that trump sounds, guess what? Then it is. The, 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 the body of Christ is going to be sealed. And so you don't want to miss out on that. You want to be one who, who hears well done and good and faithful son and daughter. Enter in to the full measure of the kingdom. So yes, you can do it. It says we are to be steadfast, immovable. It means unshakable. We stand upon this word. There's nothing that's going to talk us out of it. No demon, not the devil himself, not faithless friends, not even people in the church. No, 
we're going to be going forth to overcome so that we can. Because to him who overcomes, God has granted that you're going to be sitting with him. God has granted so much, so much want, things that you couldn't even imagine. Because we can't, you know, we can have a, uh, an understanding of it because we need to have an understanding. But the full measure of it is going to be more than you can, you know, in your, you know, your finite mind. But God's infinite. Once you arrive there at that place, it's going to be, you know, you're going to be in awe. So don't ever think that it's just about, well, you know what, it's just a free ticket to heaven. We're just going to be, you know, a bunch of angels floating on glory clouds, strumming a harp. No, it's not about that. We're not going to be angels. You know, that is uh, something that Hollywood has dreamed of. No, we're going to be, we are going to be these shining lights of beings, as it says in Ezekiel, that's going to light up the city of uh, New Jerusalem during not only the millennium, but then throughout all eternity in the new heavens and the new earth. But that's going to be Jesus as the head and us as the body. See, and then the Godhead, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and we're the fourth man in the wheel. We are the body of Christ, that wheel within the wheel. And we are to be overcomers. Jesus overcame, and he has equipped us so that we can. So if you don't, then it's, it's not God's fault. You need to check yourself. Don't, you know, don't even blame the devil. Because guess what? You have authority over the devil when he tries to rear his ugly head in your life, to try to put stumbling blocks in your pathway so that you just give up. No, we're not running a sprint. We are running a marathon. We need to have marathon faith, overcoming faith, that place where we know that we know we know what the word says and we're not going to be talked out of it. We're going to overcome so that we can be able to sit with Jesus for all eternity in the full measure of what he has placed for us. Think about it. In 2 Timothy 2, we're going to look at 3 through 7. He says, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who listed him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Think about it. It says we are to endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. It means when the devil throws things in our pathway, we need to go forth and say, oh, I'm not going to let that shake my faith. I'm not going to let that get me down. Say, oh, the devil's messing with me. I don't know what to do. Yes, you know what to do. We have the word of God. We are to be doers, not just hearers of the word. We are to do this word, to apply it, to walk in it. It says those who are engaged in warfare are not to entangle themselves with the affairs of this life. We're in the world, but we're not of it. So there's a difference. We're in it, but not of it. We're in it to... Make a difference, to be a light in a dark place, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who have ears to hear and to be a living witness. But I said, we're not to be of it. We're not to give in to the, to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and the pressures that are out there. You know, no, we're not to give in to that. Because why? Because we have been enlisted in the, as soldiers in the army of God. We are his royal priesthood remnant. And we're not to, to be moved and swayed by all the things that go out in the world. We are to occupy until he comes and we are to do business, but we are not to be entangled with the things of this world. We are to overcome those things by living and walking by this word, walking and living by faith. That's who we are, faith people who serve a faith God. But it says that if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. So a lot of people, they even try to run the race, but guess what? They're disqualified because they don't do it according to the rules. Well, the Bible is our rule book. And if we do anything opposite of this word, guess what? We're disqualified because we're not to give in to the philosophies of man, the traditions of man. No, what they think is good. The world's idea of it is if it feels good, do it. But that's not God's. God has his word. That's, this is our, our basic instructions before leaving earth. This is our roadmap. This is our rule book. And we need to run our race according to this word. And when you do, guess what? Then you'll cross that finish line and then you'll, and then you'll be going forth into the rest of eternity, overcoming. Again, sitting with Christ Jesus on the throne with him. Think about it. And then in 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, notice what Paul said. And this, this needs to be our, our attitude too. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but to also to all who have loved his appearing. Now think about it. He says, I fought the good fight. I have finished the race and kept the faith. It means he didn't give up. And we know that Paul endured all kinds of things. I mean, he was, 
you know, had all kinds of persecution. He had, you know, um, uh, and beatings and stonings and all kinds of things for the gospel's sake. But he didn't let that deter him from his faith. He overcame and he crossed the finish line. And then he says, and then there's laid up for me that crown of righteousness. That means that's the crown for those who are in right standing with God. Those who have finished their race, who have won it. He says that the Lord will not only give it to him, but also to all who love disappearing. It means you have to be expectant. That means that's talking about the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. We can't just say, oh, Lord, just count me in, you know, whenever you come, you know, we'll all find out. So it doesn't matter, you know, what, you know, when the actual timing is. No, we're not to know the day or the hour, but we are to know the season. He called the people uh, 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 during the time, Jesus said, that they're hypocrites because they could discern the, the, the patterns of the sky, the weather patterns, but they couldn't discern the signs of the times. We are to know in the sense that it is before the tribulation because God didn't reserve us to be in that wrath. Wrath, wrath is for his enemies. If you are a, a member of his body in right standing, then that wrath isn't for you. That's going to be poured out during that seven years. We are to overcome so that we can miss that, so we can stand before him after we're raptured at the judgment seat of Christ, for the body of Christ to receive that crown of righteousness, that glorious crown. Think about it. And then we can take it and lay it at his feet in worship. So no. Don't don't say this faith step is hard. It's only hard if you make it hard by just, you know, thinking that reason it's hard for a lot of people is because they're given into the flesh. They they want to have one foot in the kingdom of God and the other foot in the kingdom of the devil. It don't work. You have to be like Joshua. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. As for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. That needs to be your attitude. Uh, that was Paul's attitude. He served God. Yes, he went through a lot of things. The devil, like I said, do, did all kinds of stuff. The devil sent that messenger of Satan to try to discourage Paul from going forth in his ministry. But Paul didn't, didn't give in to that. He stood upon the word of God and let God's strength cause him to go forth to be steadfast in the faith. And not only did he fight that good fight, but guess what? He finished the race and he didn't let the devil steal his faith. And you don't need to be either. You need to overcome, run the race to win. In Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. So we are to consider him. Think about it. Jesus, you know, paid the ultimate price more than anything by that's ever lived or ever will. So think about that, all that he endured, not only during his ministry, but that horrible death on the cross, he did that for you. He took your place. So, because it says, lest you become weary and discouraged, thinking, oh, I'm, I'm trying everything, but everything's coming against me. I just, I just can't go on anymore. No, that is a, 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 a defeating attitude. No, we're to have a warrior mentality. The attitude that Jesus had, that I'm doing this, and there is a purpose for me to overcome. Why? Because I'm going to be granted to sit with Jesus, with him. One with him as his body for all eternity, not just now, but for all eternity. It says we are to to um, lay aside all those weights and all that the sins, all these things that try to ensnare us, that try to take us off of our course. And we are to run with endurance the race that is set before us, our spiritual race. We are to outlast the devil. And the key is we have to look to Jesus. He's the one who authors and finishes our faith, the one who began it and the one who's going to complete it. But our eyes have to be on him. That's how we, we can overcome and run the race. And be those ones who are going to be set with him on his throne. We have to look to him. Know that, guess what? He did everything, you know, on this earth. Satan, yeah, Satan got to tempt him. But guess what? Jesus never gave in to that temptation. He was the only one that was with, that is without sin. So, yes, sins are going to try to come up upon us. And a lot of people give in to him. But the Bible says that we are to lay aside those weights and that sin that tries to ensnare us. We are to take authority. Stand upon the word of God. Walk in holiness. I'll allow the fruit of the spirit to be developed within us. Allow the gifts of the spirit to operate through us so that we can be living witnesses. People who show forth, you know, who God is. Because we may be the only Bible some people read. So our pages better be shining. 
Because as Jesus is the light of the world, we are lights in him. So we need to also be lights in this dark place so that we can not only overcome ourselves, but be a witness for others so that they also can have the opportunity to overcome. Think about it. In uh, Revelation 3, we're going to go back to Revelation. Revelation 3. Five and six. Jesus said, he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. Now think about it. It says he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, not just the person who just, you know, names the name of Jesus and says, oh, count me in, Lord God. No, he who overcomes. And now he says, I will not blot out his name from the book of life. That means that the, the people who are disqualified, their names can be. See, so once saved, always saved is simply a false doctrine. He will not, God's not going to blot out the names of those who qualify, but those who disqualify, he will. So don't be among those. You need to overcome and qualify for the eternal body of Christ so that you can be sitting with Jesus on his throne. But the key is you have to have ears to hear. A lot of people don't. They want to hear what their flesh says. They want to hear what, you know, their favorite preacher says. But what does the word of God say? See, it's always about the word. That's the final measure, not what anybody else says. If it lines up with the word, then bless God, listen to him. But if it doesn't, guess what? You need to stay with the word. Because anything else is going to ca cause you to be in that place where you may be disqualified. So don't just take everything as gospel. What does the word say? That's how we're going to overcome by taking heed according to this word. Think about it. Then in verses uh, 10 through 13, Jesus goes on to say, because you have kept my command to persevere. Notice it's a command. I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. That means if you keep the command to overcome, then you won't, you won't have to be one of those ones who's left behind for the tribulation. You're qualified to be taken out of that. He says, behold, I am coming quickly. That means when he comes, it'll be suddenly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. See, look, see, the only way they can take it is if you allow it, them to. See, you, get, you have to give the devil permission. He can't just take it because he wants to take it. You have to give him permission. If you allow him through any type of legal right of way, through disobedience, through rebellion, through just false doctrine, whatever, then he can take it. Well, don't do that. Don't let him or anyone he uses take it. You, you lay hold of it and you don't let it go. How you do it? By staying as an overcomer in this word of God. He says, he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. Again, he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So all throughout each one of these letters to the church, and we've looked at this recently, he always says, to he who overcomes, and to he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. It means you have to have ears to hear. That means it's not just tough. That means not just your nat your natural ears, but also your spiritual ears. It means you you can't just you know get, go through the motions or just say, oh yeah, I heard that, I heard that. No, you need to really hear and then walk in obedience to it. See, a lot of people don't. Some people do hear, but they never walk into a, an obedience of what they heard the Lord say right here in His Word, and that's the key to overcoming. And if you don't overcome, like I said, you're not going to be sitting with him on the throne. And that's not a place you want to be if you have any sense. You need to have that overcoming attitude because, like I said, it's, time is short. And once that last trump sounds, the body of Christ, the eternal body of Christ is going to be sealed forever. And once that tribulation begins, yes, there's going to be people who are going to, you know, uh, be, you know, uh, martyred for their faith. Yes. And they're going to finally, you know, pledge, you know, their allegiance to, to God Almighty. But they still won't be a part of the body of Christ. That option will have passed once that last trump is sound. Yes, they'll, 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 they'll go to heaven, but they'll be standing before his throne. Whereas the body of Christ is going to be on his throne. Think about it. And that's a whole big difference. You want to be the only ones who are going to be on his throne, ruling and reigning with him. That's for the body of Christ. The sons of obedience, the ones who overcome, like I said, everything that's out there. Every oppression, every depression, every bondage, every trick of the devil, we overcome it all. Because, like I said, we have equipment right here. 
we have the word of God, so there's no excuse. In Acts 20, 22 through 24, It says, and see now, I go bound in the spirit of Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. This is Paul. Except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Think about it. He says, none of these things move me. He says, because I don't count my life dear to myself. He says, I want to finish my race with joy and the ministry that the Lord has given me. And that needs to be, once again, our attitude. So we see so many examples, you know, that of, of Paul who wrote uh, two thirds of the New Testament, a mighty man of God. And we are to have that same mindset that we are not going to be moved by anything that tries to get in our way of walking on this narrow path, finishing this race. Like I said, yes, the devil's going to throw a monkey wrench. He's going to throw all kinds of stumbling blocks in your way. But you need to take authority over them. You need to move past them. You know, uh, get break free from those hindering spirits. Break free from all of those uh, agendas of, that the enemy will use. And he'll use it through people. Break free and remove the hindrances so that you can go forth to run this race and to overcome. Like I said, we need to finish our race with joy. This is a joyful time, a joyful journey of faith, and we need to walk on it. Yes, things are going to come, but rejoice. The Bible says things would come, but you have authority over them. You can overcome them if you would live and move and walk by faith and not just think that you have to have that. See, a lot of people have a, a whining attitude. Oh, the devil's bothering me again. I don't know what to do. And stop all that nonsense. The Bible says in Jeremiah, you need to, you know, stop, you know, weeping and whining. Refrain your, 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 your voice from weeping. And wipe away all those tears because you're going to be rewarded if, guess what, you stand upon this word. Don't, don't give in to all that whining attitude. No, be a winner. Overcome so that you can be one who is on that throne with Jesus for all eternity. Think about it. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. We're going to look at 13 through 15. It says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. So we have to walk in maturity. But notice he says that that I forget those things which are behind. It means it doesn't matter what you could have, did, would have, should have did. No, the past needs to be dead. Get past the past. It's gone. Even yesterday's the past. Move, move forward. He says, and go forward to those things which are ahead. What's the next big thing? The rapture of the church, the glorification and rapture. He says, I press toward for the goal for the prize of the upward call. That awesome prize. He's talking about running his race so that he can overcome. And we need to overcome too so that we can be on that throne with Jesus. So we have to have an attitude of maturity. Stop, you know, being in that place where you're just going, you know, through the motions or that place where you're just trying to let the past uh, cause you not to move forward into the future. No, get the past out of the way. Put the past to death and start walking in the newness of life. Start having your eyes on the prize. Jesus is, like I said, he is the ultimate prize. He is the ultimate eternal refuge. And he wants you to be in that place where you, your eyes are on him, knowing that he's the prize. At the end of that finish line, there's Jesus. And like I said, and he's yes, he's there with you at the beginning of it. He's through all the middle of it. But at the end is the full measure of it, the eternity. See, a lot of people, like I said, they they, they have God in, in little measures. Well, God doesn't want us to have him, of him in little measures. He wants us to have him in his fullness. And that's going to happen. If you have ears to hear what the Bible says and you start applying it, be an overcomer. That way you can be in that full measure of the Godhead bodily, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in all his fullness. Not just, okay, well, I'm, I'm a Christian now, so that's all. No, we need to overcome. Because like I said, if you don't overcome, then guess what? 
you're going to miss out on the fullness of the blessing that God wants for you. And that's not a place you want to be. Like I always say, that's not a place you want to be if you have any sense. We need to have sense. We need to have our ears open, our eyes open to the knowledge of this truth so that we can be overcomers and qualify. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 19 and tw through 21, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. But where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So is your treasures here on the earth? Or are they in heaven? Because that's where your heart is. So don't don't be so attached to the things of this world, attached to, you know, people and things and, and, and careers and positions. No, all that stuff's going to fade away. Just like running that race and the person in the natural realm gets a, a prize, a trophy, a ribbon, that thing's going to get mothy. It's going to fade away. But our eternal prize is imperishable. It's eternal. It's Jesus himself and his kingdom. And do you want to get there? Then you need to overcome. Don't let anything or anybody talk you out of your walk of faith. Overcome it so that you can, like I said, run that race and cross that finish line. And like I said, go forth into the arms of Jesus himself. In 1 Thessalonians 2.19, Paul talking to the church at Thessalonica, he says, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? See, that's the ultimate goal. You and I in the presence of the Lord at his coming. It's not about all the, the things that we think it is, all the things, all these religious things. Ideas. No, it's about being qualified for the glorification and the rapture, being an overcomer so that we can be in his presence at his coming when he appears for his body at that last trump. So you really need to take this seriously. Don't be talked out of your faith walk by, you know, faithless Christians or people out in the world or whoever it is. No, overcome. Yes, things are going to happen. They're going to try to tear you down, but you have the authority over that. You have the equipment. God didn't just, you know, leave us without anything to be able to walk in this journey. No, he's given us weapons of warfare. He's given us the power to live and move and have our being in him through faith. He's given us the Holy Spirit to teach us, to help us to do this. So don't be talked out of it because that's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to fall flat on your face so that you won't overcome. Well, don't give in to that. Not going to go there, but in Romans 8, it says we are more than conquerors. A lot of people are having become conquerors, much less more than conquerors. But we are to have that attitude so that we can go forth. Because to him who overcomes, it's going to be granted more than you could ever imagine. It's all going to be, like I said, a glorious time. So let me end with that scripture that we started off again. So I want you to really take this seriously. Really get it ingrained in your thinking so that you can be one who reaps the benefits of this. Jesus said in Revelation 3.21, To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So please have ears to hear today and be one of those ones who runs your race and you win it. You qualify to be glorified and raptured and to be sitting with Jesus on his throne for all eternity. And that's what's coming for those who will overcome. So really, really take this seriously. And always remember Isaiah 40 verse 8. The word of God stands forever. Amen.